In this video, we're talking about how to use product rule to find the derivative of a function. And in this particular problem, we've been given the function h of x is equal to quantity 1 divided by x squared minus 3 divided by x to the fourth times x plus 5x cubed. Now, as a reminder, I've written here the product rule formula. And all it tells us is that when we have two functions multiplied together, so we'll call here one function, f of x, and another function, g of x, and you can see that they're multiplied together. So when we want to take the derivative of the product of these two functions, remember d over dx means take the derivative of whatever follows me. So the derivative of f of x times g of x. When we want to take the derivative of the product of these two functions, that's called product rule. And we use this value over here on the right hand side to find the derivative. Now notice that f of x over here translates directly to f of x over here on the right hand side. And you'll also find g of x over here on the right hand side. That means the only two pieces that are missing are f prime of x and g prime of x. So those are really the only two things we have to find. So our first step is going to be to identify f of x and g of x in our function. So we have the function here, h of x. And the easiest way to divide this into two functions is just to take each binomial factor here. So what we can say is that this first factor we'll call f of x. So we'll say that this is going to be our f of x. And we're going to say that the second factor is going to be g of x, because both of these are just functions of x, and they're multiplied together. So we have the product of two functions, and we want to take the derivative of h of x. So h of x is the product of two functions. We want to take the derivative of h of x. So in order to do that, we're going to need to find f prime of x and g prime of x. Well, the first thing that we should do is we should take this first function f of x and we should change it so that we don't have fractions. It'll make it simpler to find the derivative. So let's go ahead and say first that h of x is going to be equal to, instead of 1 divided by x squared, remember when we have anything, we'll just say 1, but over x to the n, that's going to be equal to x to the negative n. In other words, we can just take this x to the n, move it to the numerator, and the sign on the exponent changes. This is just a rule of exponents or a rule from algebra. So the positive exponent will become a negative exponent. And if we have the negative exponent in the numerator and we move it back to the denominator, it will become positive. So when we change its location here from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa, we just flip the sign on the exponent. Which means this x squared, if we move it to the numerator, it's going to become x to the negative 2. So we have the 1 times x to the negative 2, which is just x to the negative 2. And then same thing here, we have x to the 4th in the denominator. When we move it to the numerator, we'll keep the negative 3, so minus 3. And the x to the 4th will become x to the negative 4. Then we're going to keep the second function exactly as is, so x plus 5x cubed. So now our first factor is still f of x, our second factor is still g of x. So using our product rule formula, we want to say that the derivative of h of x, the derivative of this function, the notation of course will be h prime of x, which means the derivative of h of x. So now looking at the derivative, trying to take the derivative here of the right hand side, we're going to need to use our product rule formula. So what it tells us is that the first piece here is f prime of x. So coming back here, we say f of x is our first binomial factor here, x to the negative 2 minus 3x to the negative 4. That's f of x. We need to find the derivative of that. Well, to take the derivative of this function, we just need to use power rule. So the derivative of x to the negative 2 is going to be negative 2 x to the negative 3. Because remember, power rule tells us that we take the exponent and we bring it down in front here. So the negative 2 comes down in front, negative 2. We leave the x. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent to get the new exponent. So we take negative 2 minus 1 gives us a negative 3. So our new exponent is negative 3. And we'll just go term by term like that. So here we're going to have our minus 3. We bring the exponent down in front, so that's a negative 4. We're going to multiply that by the 3. We leave the x, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So negative 4 minus 1 is a negative 5. So this then is f prime of x, and we've taken care of that part. We need to multiply that whole thing by g of x. And remember, g of x is x plus 5x cubed. So we're just going to multiply this whole thing by x plus 5x cubed, and that takes care of g of x. Then according to our formula here, we're going to add, so we're going to add to that, 
The first thing here is f of x. So we come back and we look at f of x. We're going to use this part here where we got rid of our fraction. So we're going to say that f of x is x to the negative 2 minus 3x to the negative 4. And then that takes care of f of x. Now we have g prime of x. So we go back here. We say that this is g of x. x plus 5x cubed is g of x. We need to take its derivative. So what's the derivative of x plus 5x cubed? Well, we want to take that one term at a time. The derivative of x is 1. So we're going to say 1 plus the derivative of 5x cubed. Well, we bring that 3 down in front, and we get 5 times 3. We keep the x, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And now we have everything we need. We put in g prime of x. So we've completed our product rule formula. Now we just need to simplify this as much as we can. So if we simplify here, we're going to get negative 2 x to the negative 3. Negative 3 times a negative 4 is a positive 12 x to the negative 5 times x plus 5x cubed. Here we're going to get plus x to the negative 2 minus 3x to the negative 4. And then here, 1 plus 5 times 3 is 15. So 1 plus 15x squared. So at the very least, for our final answer, we would want to change these negative exponents back into positive exponents. So for example, this negative 2x to the negative 3 would become negative 2 divided by x cubed, x to the positive 3. But we're probably going to be able to simplify this derivative even further if we multiply out these polynomial functions. So we have two factors, two binomial factors here, multiplied together. We want to multiply everything out, and we're just going to use FOIL, first, outer, inner, last, to multiply these binomials together. So here we're going to have negative 2x to the negative 3 times x. That's going to give us negative 2. Remember when we have like bases, so this is x to the negative 3 and x to the first, they both have a base of x, so we have like bases. When you have like bases, you can add the exponents together. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So we end up with negative 2x to the negative 2. Now we're going to take negative 2x to the negative 3 and multiply it by 5x cubed. So that's going to give us a negative 10x to the 0 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Now we're going to take 12x to the negative 5 and multiply by both of these terms. That's going to give us a positive 12x to the negative 4 and a positive 60x to the negative 2. Now we can move on to these two terms here. We're going to start with the x to the negative 2 and multiply it by the 1 and the 15x cubed. So when we do that, we're going to get plus x to the negative 2 plus 15x to the 0 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And then multiplying our negative 3x to the negative 4 by 1 and 15x squared, we're going to get minus 3x to the negative 4 and then minus 45x to the negative 2 because negative 4 plus 2 is a negative 2. Now we want to get our like terms together. So first of all, let's notice that we have two terms involving x to the 0. We have negative 10x to the 0 and 15x to the 0. Well, remember that x to the 0 is 1, which means this whole thing here is going to cancel because essentially we have negative 10 times 1. That's still just a negative 10. Here we have 15 times 1. That's still just a 15. So if we pull those down in front, we're going to have negative 10 plus 15. That's going to give us a positive 5. So we'll say the derivative h prime of x is going to be a positive 5. That takes care of these two terms right here. Now let's look at our x to the negative 2 terms. So here we have x to the negative 2. We have negative 2 of them plus 60 of them gives us a positive 58 plus 1 of them, 1x to the negative 2, gives us a positive 59 minus 45 of them gives us a positive 14. So we end up with plus 14x to the negative 2. But keep in mind that since we have 14x to the negative 2, we can call that 14 over x to the positive 2, or 14 over x squared. And that'll take care of the x to the negative 2 here, 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 and here. And then finally, we just have two terms involving x to the negative 4. So we have positive 12 of them minus 3 of them it gives us a positive 9. So we end up with plus 9. But then we have plus 9x to the negative 4. So we can take that x to the negative 4, move it to the denominator, and call it x to the positive 4 once it's in the denominator. This then is the derivative of our original function, which we found using product rule.